after that, she joined to the Vignali lab, uh, where she did the almost the work that presenting today, the, the publishing really impressive uh, journal in Nature Immunology in 2010. And the title is Neuropilin 1 is the T cell memory checkpoint limiting long term anti tumor immunity. Thank you so much, Gracie. So, so hello everyone. Uh, so first, I'd like to thank the Open Bot Science organizers. Congratulations for such an initiative. Uh, it's really a great uh, opportunity for connecting the scientists all over the world and uh, talking about our favorite topic. So today, I'd like to share uh, my story that we identified in Young Pilling One is a T cell checkpoint, but uh, pretty unique in the sense that it is, uh, we consider is a memory checkpoint that limiting the long-term anti-tumor immunity. So to start out, I, I have one, uh, have some introduction in the background, uh, but I want to start with asking this question about whether actually functional uh, memory against a tumor really exists. Why I'm asking this is actually whenever we talk about the immunological memory, we think about we think about the infections, we think about the vaccinations. But when coming to the memory response against the tumor, I would like to admit that it is a, still a topic on the on the quite strong debate in the field. Uh, indeed, the memory against the tumors is somehow, if not completely diminished, it is still quite uh, compromised. That's why we see so many uh, clinical patients, they have very uh, devastating tumor relapse or recurrence, um, certain, uh, some of which may be due to the lack of the memory, uh, memory tumor immunity, long-term tumor immunity to to, to fight against the, the, the tumor recurrence. But uh, so back to the back to this topic, if this the, mem the memory again tumor really uh, exists. But if we really take a look back into the all the literature, is actually um, so if, more than 30 years ago, some scientists already done very beautiful uh, observations that really uh, show the scenario that uh, there is bona fide immunological memory against the tumors. So here is the experimental they, they used. So they implanted mice with this uh, mesoclacerin uh, A induced uh, uh, fibrosarcoma. Uh, here is called meso A. So they implanted mice uh, and then removed those tumor on day nine, just like how we do the surgery in the tumor bearing uh, host um, or in cancer patients. Then they then after the removal of the primary tumor, they did this test. So they want to know how those uh, the bearing of primary tumor may confer the host a certain immunity to the secondary tumor. But to do the re-challenge, they pick the two time point, which is the, the same day of tumor uh, re, uh, resection or two weeks later. So the re, and they use in the readout of the growth of secondary tumor to, to uh, the test. And the, the result is actually pretty clear. As long as the mice had been had a tumor before, but already removed, they are very capable of control the growth of the secondary or the rechange the tumor, but not the mice that never had tumor before. And those they even look at the cellular requirement for conferring such control for the secondary tumor growth, they found that they are T cell dependent. Both CD4 and the CD8 are required in particular if you need such, uh, such protection for the later re challenge. 
And uh, they even go one step further to look at uh, some physiological physiology of those T cells or the phenotype of those T cells. Although at that moment, not so much T cell subsets are well, are well defined, but they were able to show using the using pharmacological approach basically is the, the cyclophosphamide, a well-known chemotherapy drug. So see why basically it works by killing the highly proliferative cells. They found that to have this long-term immunity against the rick tumor, they, this, this effect is actually CY resistant, indicating that the T cell that capable confers such such protection is not highly proliferative at the moment of re-challenge. But if you give the CY at the time of tumor excision, or I mean the, the time when you remove the primary tumor, and if you treat the mice with the, this drug, you will abolish the later uh, uh, protection from the tumor recharge. That's indicating that these cells, the cells that uh, in the later time confer such protection, they, they are derived from the early stage. So to conclude, the author actually uh, uh, conclude that in a tumor bearing host, there is such, such concomitant immunity that also exhibits a long-lived capacity that will control the tumor growth, uh, the growth of sub subsequent tumor occurring, occurrence. They even go one step further to speculate this concomitant immunity has the, has the feature of so-called memory immunity. So, so I really enjoy reading those old literature. Actually, it's paved the way of the concept of immunological memory against the tumor. But still go back to our real world, still go back to the current debate, why we do see such, uh, such um, uh, diminished or like a minimal you know, memory whenever we test a tumor bearing host. So, so one key thing is, I think their finding is largely limited to the immunogenic tumor type. So methyl A is a carcinogen induced tumor, which has very high uh, tumor mutation burden, may make it very immunogenic. And they also do, do emphasize in their paper that uh, all their observations seems to limit it to immunogenic tumor types. And, uh, and uh, uh, during my study, I was also curious did this test with the MC38 versus B16 tumor, which we know that MC38 compared with B16 is far more immunogenic and is also checkpoint inhibitor uh, sensitive. In, in contrast, B16 is a well-known poorly immunogenic tumor, tumor type. So if I repeat the whole process, I can see that the mice can the wild uh, wild time mice can perfectly protect from the rechange from of the secondary MC38 tumor, but this and they are indeed a T cell dependent because the reg one knockout mice they lose such protection. However, this situation is far worse, uh, almost almost abolished in the in the host that bearing a B16 tumor which we know that is very uh, poorly immunogenic. So this give, basically pull us all, all the way back to the reality that indeed, even the concept or the pheno phenomenon of uh, immunological memory against the tumor may exist, but it's, it's very conditional. For example, it's limited to highly immunogenic tumor type. And, uh, and that's, and also due to the reason I'm going to talk about now, it, uh, like there are several barriers in the tumor microenvironment that also set uh, the hurdles to really generate the functional memory CD T cells in cancer. Those hurdles including, for example, very poor T cell priming is due to the low tumor, immune, tumor mutation burden and the, the evasion of uh, um, and the EE, insufficient antigen presentation. And, uh, and secondary, the tumor microenvironment is so well known being immunosuppressive and they, they, they lack the 
critical uh, accessory signals, the so-called signal two and the three for the T cells to induce a productive immunity and also the following generation of memory phenotype. And the, the last but not the least is that the tumor actually represents such a scenario that uh, um, uh, similar to a chronic antigen stimulation. And under such situation, the T cells are constantly be uh, stimulated and they, they can't really uh, acquire, reacquire the quiescence or the stem-like stem property that is actually very crucial for generating memory pool. So at this point, we, despite we know we, we, we do witness the success of the immunotherapy represented by the checkpoint inhibitors, but uh, a lot of questions are still unaddressed, in particular in, under this topic of how, how can we make the tumor, uh, uh, anti-tumor immunity durable or make it long-term. So can we really reinvigorate uh, the memory T cells just or uh, restore tumor, the memory development in tumor, just like how we reinvigorate effect T cells. So, so the last piece of background is coming to the molecule that I'm gonna talk about is neon pillin. It is a receptor really uh, gaining a lot of attention in the field of tumor immunity in recent years. So uh, due to is is indeed a, a molecule that's highly expressed in the tumor microenvironment, both by the immune and non-immune compartment. So it can also express by the tumor cells itself. But more, most prominently is the work by others and also our lab showing that neon pillin is actually a crucial receptor on regulatory T cells and also uh, tumor associated microphages. Um, the way how they regulate this two cell type both, uh, both are both required for the pro-tumor uh, function of these two cell types. So with those knowledge, this made the neon pinning one is a very uh, attempting uh, therapeutic target for the IO therapy. But uh, whenever we develop uh, uh, drugs against uh, immune related molecule, we kind of ignore its function in the CD T cells. However, that is the gap of the knowledge so far not clear that what's the role of neon pinning in the CD T cells. And this is the start of my project. So we started out by asking the question whether neon pinning one is actually expressed by CD T cells. And the answer is yes, but mean but in the tumor bearing host. So if looking at the naive mice, uh, we examine the neon pinion one expression across all the non CD8 subsets. We indeed see a very minimal expression of neon pinion. But uh, when the mice were implanted with tumor and we examine the CD8 T cell infiltrating into the tumor, here is the B16. And we will also uh, be able to see similar, uh, similar um, pattern in other tumor types. So basically, we see a very high, strong induction of neon pinion in the effector CD8 T cell population, as well as some memory precursor cell uh, 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 phenol uh, population. But the most prominently is we find this pattern when we, so, so when we look at um, the, the, the subsets of uh, tumor infiltration uh, lymphocytes, it was the cells that express high level of uh, the well-known inhibitor receptors such as PD-1, LAP3, TIM3, et cetera, the, they are the exact same subsets express the highest level of neon pin. So at that moment, it really gave us a very strong, um, strong speculation that maybe neon pinin is another inhibitory-like receptor. If that's the case, maybe blocking neon pinin on its own or combined with uh, uh, blocking other inhibitor receptor, we may see some efficacy uh, of controlling primary tumor just as how we see from the, the uh, checkpoint inhibitors. So that prompts us using this model where neon pinning is uh, selectively deficient in the CD8 T cell. So we, we made those mice 
and they implanted them with either B16 or MC38. And we are looking for any difference in the tumor growth phenotype. But quite to our disappointment, we didn't see any changes in the growth of primary tumor whatsoever. So despite the high expression of neon peeling in the uh, tumor infiltrating CD8 T cells, but it seems it's not really uh, uh, play any role in CD8 T cell mediated control primary tumor. So that is actually quite a challenge to this project. But fortunately, we didn't stop here. Rather, we modified our protocol and we started to use this tumor specific memory model, just as I introduced in the previous slides. So we removed the B16 at day 12 and wait for a month or two months and retrained the, the mice with the same B16 tumor, uh, just to reinforce the sense that actually the, the, the memory response against the B16 tumor is, is largely is is largely dim diminished in a wild type condition. As you can see, that over ninety percent of mice will succumb to succumb to secondary tumor. Only like around ten percent are tumor free. But with this, if we look at the mutant mice, it's really really su surprising to see that over fifty percent of mice are actually completely protected from secondary tumor. So this is our first time to really see a role of neon peeling in, in the CD8 T cells, which indicates that neon peeling actually limit, that selectively limits the protective immunity against the rich and the tumors. That uh, also leads us to speculate the, the selective function of neon peeling in the memory development. But uh, before jumping that conclusion, we really want to we really want to, to confirm this uh, protection from secondary tumor is, come, is due to a um, memory, t is memory T cell mediated. So we, spec we, we reason that if that's the case, we, sh we should be able to see uh, in, enlarge the memory pool in the mutant mice. So, so that's what we did. Uh, did uh, that's what exactly we we did. So we, we look at day, day 12. Seeing antigen after which tumor are removed. So, so we examine the, the spleen of those uh, mice on day 12 and using the tetramer to trace the B16 tumor, the GP100 tetramer to trace the G B16 tumor specifically the T cells. And quite to our reassurance, we do see that increase the proportion of tetramer part of CD8 T cells in the mutant mice. And more importantly, those CD8 T cells indeed preferentially exhibit a central memory phenotype. So that's pretty encouraging in supporting the the, the hypothesis that there is a enhanced memory de development in those mutant mice. Then, so we, first, we next trace back up to the tumor site, to the tumor site, and to see if we further change, also the similar changes in the memory pool at, um, in intratumor, which is actually not the case. So we didn't really see the change in the memory T cells. Uh, memory T cell pool in the tumor, but rather we see that in the mutant mice, there is a preferential um, increase of the effector T cell proportions. Mm. So, so that make us to speculate maybe in the absence of neon peeling, the, those effective cell, T cells may preferentially become memory precursor cells as, as opposed to the short-lived effectors. So we basically use um, these two phenotypes to further, to further subset in the effector T cells, but uh, actually the ratio between, between MPEX and the SLACs didn't really change, although their numbers is in, are indeed both increase in the mutant mice. So at this point so far, we basically came into such a scenario. So in the mutant mice, after the um, uh, encountering the tumor antigen, um, we know that the consequence somehow there is an enhanced memory uh, development in the peripheral. And um, is, but uh, we, 
but uh, in, in terms of how those memory uh, development is uh, modulated at the tumor site, we didn't really see the changes in the first uh, bifurcation, which is between the memory precursor and the short-lived effect of T cells. Seems this step is not really affected by, by neuron peeling. So then why the memory precursor cells in the absence of neuron peeling have an advantage to develop into central memory T cell pool. So, so um, knowing that in, in, in the tumor microenvironment, another prominent event going on is the T cell resorption. And uh, also the so-called memory precursor cells uh, identified by highly expression of CD127 happened to be the same cell type give rise to exhausted T cells. So it's kind of a derail. It's, we can con or we can consider this exhaustion development can be a detour from the classical memory development. So, so we further, so we speculate maybe as absence of neuron peeling may somehow inhibit or suppress this uh, trajectory towards T cell exhaustion. So, so we look at the T cell phenotype of T cell exhaustion use the expression of well-known uh, well um, um, inhibitory receptors. So as shown here, indeed, in the absence of new neuron peeling, we see this, they, they are indeed a reduction of the cells expressing the high level of, of all these IRs, which you can uh, consider the being the most severely exhausted T cells. But look into, into more detail what the most changes we found is actually neuron peeling modulates, modulates the, 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 the relative uh, uh, ratio between the progenitor-like exhausted T cell versus terminally exhausted T cells. So you can see that in the absence of neuron peeling, there is a higher uh, percentage of progenitor-like exhausted T cells. But looking at the the cell numbers we know we found that this increase of progenitor like T cell exhaustion is it's not due to the reduction of terminal exhaustion. So their number are, are not reduced. Rather, is the per, uh, progenitor like exhausted T cells is per, preferentially maintained while they still give rise to the terminally exhausted T cells, and that's actually the the nature of those. PTE, uh, P, uh, progenitor like exotic T cell is that's what they essentially do. So what they they are capable of doing is to give rise to the terminally exotic T cell, but still maintain certain level of self renewal. But uh, uh, apparently, uh, in the absence of neuron peeling, such self renewal ability was even in, enhanced. So we think that's the exact point that neuron peeling has a function. And due to this preferential maintain of precursor exhausted T cell, this may give an advantage to not exhausting all the, the classical impacts so that they still have some chance to, uh, to, to, to maintain the memory differentiation potential. So next, we also ask the some similar question about uh, cell intrinsic or cell extrinsic effect of this neuron peeling to inhibit the memory differentiation. So basically, we did this computation experiment. So we made the neuron peeling sufficient or deficient uh, CD8 T cells, both on the background of PML, which is a T cell transgenic uh, cell recognizing the melanocytes uh, uh, antigen, which is highly expressed in the B16 tumor. So we co-transfer both cells from both genotype into the same host, so that eliminate any changes from the microenvironment. And we use this the similar time, time scheme to, to look at their ability to infiltrate the, uh, the primary tumor and also their ability to persist in vivo in long term. So the result reinforce our, our uh, hypothesis that in the absence of neuron peeling, so those neuron peeling deficient females, they have even this, so they start out at one-to-one -one ratio and even 
although maintain the one-to-one -one ratio at early stage, but uh, eventually it is the new P1 deficient cells outnumber their Y-type counterparts. Further reinforce the, the notion that the new P1 deficient T cells have a, a high advantage of in vivo persistence. And this is the same for the primary phase and the secondary phase. So, so at this moment, uh, we are pretty much convinced that uh, this neon peeling has this selective role in the memory development and uh, due to some effect actually by, by, um, uh, by promoting the terminally T cell exhaustion or in other words, in the absence of neon peeling seems the terminally exhaustion is not so severe that the memory precursor cells still have the chance to to, to make memory cells. So, so what could be the mechanism to, to have all these effects? Oh, um, so, sorry. Sorry, I had the one. Okay, I come back. Mm -hmm. So, so next we come to some some study on the on the molecular mechanism. Since we know that new pinion can potential T cell exhaustion, so what could be the downstream effectors of new pinion? So in terms of T cell exhaustion, the current the, the most compelling theory is this uh, partnerless unfed signaling. So basically, we know that if unfed partner with AP1, they produce a pr productive T cell uh, activity by producing uh, those effector cytokines and uh, but, uh, but in the absence or in, or of AP1 or insufficient amount of AP1, unfat can act on its own, which actually instead of driving a, a, a gene transcription program that uh, featured by T cell exhaustion and uh, reduce the effect of function. So, so we speculate maybe new peeling had may work in these two, either of the two possibilities. One maybe new pinning may direct modulate unfed activity, uh, which we indeed tested by this unfed nuclear translocation assay or the calcium flux, which we do didn't really see difference between the Y type and the new plant deficient CJ T cells. Then the next possibility is somehow a new pinning may affect the the abundance of AP1 in the CDA T cells, which may exacerbate this partnerless unfact scenario. So, so to test that, we, we did this assay, which we, we uh, isolate the, the, the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes from B16 tumors and uh, in, in vitro stimulate them with PMA and PMA Anomycin, which is a condition that's known to induce AP1 uh, expression. So AP1 is that its expression is not always constitutive, rather it's, it's a typical um, induced by T cell signaling. So PNA anomycin used here is uh, the signal to induce AP1. And then we measure the key component of AP1, which is C June here as the readout. So this procedure basically are testing the, the cells already undergone the chronic stimulation in vivo. Do they still preserve this TCR sensitivity to produce AP1? So uh, we keep the same gating sch scheme to stratify between the progenitor and the, the terminally exhausted T cells by by SLAMF6 and the TIM3. So SLAMF6 is, is known as a surrogate for TCF1. And, and they, we found that, so the induction of AT1, AP1 after this TCR re-stimulation is perfectly fine in the, in the cells are exhibiting this progenitor like the exotic T cell phenotype is, is as the, like the blue line, um, but, when the cells progress, even progress from the exhausted progenitalized exhaust T cell to the terminal exhausted T cell, they are gradually they are gradually lose the ability to induce C June in responding to T cell act, uh, activation. That may 
may may explain the the in vivo situation that in the chronically is stimulated T cell they gradually lose this uh, T cell sensitivity and uh, they lose the AP1 production and uh, give the chance for N fact to act on its own. And uh, we found that in the absence of neonpilin, such reduction of uh, AP1 induction is somehow restored. So that's uh, we from here we we conclude that neonpilin seems to 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 in to to potentiate the 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 loss of uh, AP1 induction AP1 expression in the chronically uh, stimulated T cells. So last, um, yeah. So so lastly, uh, I want to share some um, uh, physical uh, physiological implication of our finding here. So we, we look at. Uh, so we want also to see in the clinical patients uh, if there is certain correlation between the memory phenotype and the neuron pin one expression in the CD8 T cells. So so we examine this in a cohort of head and neck. Uh, Tumor patients, and uh, we using using this gating strategy, we look at the neuron pin one expression in the naive effect memory and uh, the terminally uh, uh, differentiated temporal T cells, CD8 T cells. So basically, we found that the increase of expression of neuron pin basically correlates with the, the 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 patients with advanced disease stages. This seems to be true for both the expression in memory compartment also effector compartment. But, but uh, in terms of tumor recurrence, we do say that it is the increase, the, the higher expression of neuron pinning in the memory compartment is actually correlate with, correlate with tumor recurrence. And when coming to the survival, we also say that the expression of neuron pinning in the effect memories is significantly correlated with a poor survival. So this not only uh, confirm our finding in the mice that new opinion seems to expression in the CD8 T cell correlate with a poor prognosis in the tumor growth or the uh, and always the tumor reoccurrence. And it is also correlate is also highly associated with this memory phenotype. So earlier I saved this slide supposed to present earlier, but I save it here. Another phenotype in terms of our new pin one CD8 uh, conditional knockout is not only the memory response is also it synergized with the anti PD one uh, checkpoint inhibitor uh, to to for the tumor control. So to see this effect, we actually use the subdose anti PD one. We see that the wild type with subdose anti PD one only in around the 20 to 25 percent complete response, but in the neon pin one mutant mice, we do see that uh, the we significantly in, enhance the complete response rates. So when we when we do did all the work and knowing the the, the some mechanism how neon pin one work, uh, this the whole this phenotype is not uh, difficult to understand because since neon pin one uh, deficient CD8 T cell are preferentially maintained as the as the it's the precursor like exotic T cell stage and we several paper already beautifully show that those are the cells responding to anti PD one checkpoint induced um, inhibitor induced reinvigoration so that all fits why we observed this synergize between neon P1 deficiency and the anti PD one effect. And with this, we also look at some patients and something. So these are a cohort of melanoma patients that received the checkpoint inhibitor therapy, either by anti-PD-1, anti-CTLA-4 or combination therapy. So when we stratify those patients by their response, which so basically responder and the, the progressor or non-responder here, we found that neon pinion one expression is highly expressed, is more more higher in the in the in the non-responders post post checkpoint post therapy. So seems indicating that neon pinion may act as some adaptive. Uh, uh, resistance mechanism, and uh, importantly, such such correlation is more prominent in the 
effect. So this also, oh, so this is also accompanied by the reduction of memory memory T cell compartment in those non-responders. So this is the inverse correlation here. And the such inverse correlation is more prominent in the non-responders. And we also similarly see the inverse correlation between the neon PNR expression with this uh, master transcription regulator TCF1 that is, is key for driving the effect memory phenotype. So the, that's, this inverse correlation is also more prominent in the non-responders non than the responders. So with that, um, I hope by today's, uh, today's presentation, I want to, uh, uh, to give you such a message, which I, I borrowed the cartoon that uh, our first speaker, Nanny Dean, uh, and uh, her mentor, Dr. Anna Anderson, wrote for our uh, for our paper. So that uh, this uh, so they really beautifully summarized our finding in this uh, story. And uh, and uh, I think uh, still go back to my first slides talking about in the current debate in the field if there is a mem uh, functional memory in the tumor. I I would say there would there is, but it's largely inhibited by so many multiple factors. Or we can say that memory checkpoint, one of which could be the neon peeling, because removal of neon peeling seems really don't have effect in the primary tumor control but in, indeed uh, strongly strongly make the tumor immunity to be more durable and long-lived. So it may give some uh, new strategy for, for developing therapeutic uh, approaches for better uh, uh, fighting against the cancers. So with that, I'd like to thank, uh, thank, thank the people. So I I really, I'm really grateful for my mentor, Dr. Dario Vagnali, uh, to let me work on such an interesting project and all the lab, mem lab members who are really supportive and give a lot of discussions along the way. And also my, my collaborators uh, here, they, they kindly provide the reagents and the human patients and uh, also uh, collaborate, we collaborate on a, a lot of key data analysis. So with that, I'd like uh, thank you for all your attention for your attentions, and uh, I'd like to take questions. Thank you, Gracie. Really nice talk. Uh, I we don't receive a question yet, but I I have a question. You know, in which stage of the CDA uh, is more effective the blocking of the NR, uh, the neuropilin one, or, or is it's not important if you block it in the, for example, when you when you have the naive or or more effector or memory T cell. So, so neon pin one expression is only coming only comes up after activation T cell activation. So I would say is the during the late stage of activation when the cells uh, undergo this switch from effector to the exotic T cell, and that's the point that uh, neon peeling are actually pushing towards the direction to exhaustion. But if you can block neon peeling at that moment, you may you may request uh, sequester them to mm -hmm. uh, stay longer at uh, at least the, the early stage of T cell exhaustion, which they can maintain more plasticity and uh, can be reprogrammed. Yeah, yeah. Because when you treat with the immunotherapy, principally PD PD one or PD one you induce more exhaustion of the T cell. But what happens if you have the already with the, with the T cell in a stage, the, the energy state, and then you block in or you block in the neuropilin one? Maybe, in, I don't know, it's better or no, it's, it's better in, um, induce more T cell, T, T cell memory before that you induce the uh, treat with the immunotherapy. This is my question. I don't know which is in which uh, stage is better, the, maybe the, the, the blocking, the NRP1. Yes, this is, a, this is a really good question. And we are also like uh, discussed internally a lot of times. I think it's very challenging to answer. 
uh, mm. particular in the setting of uh, patients. Uh, we only, all we can say, so it, it will be really benefited too with some other markers that we know, for example, examine the, the CD T cells to, to, to get a sense of how, how much exotic they are at the time of uh, you, are, you are about to give the therapy by doing some biopsy analysis. And I think the bottom lines we'd want to catch a point that yung ping one should be already present in those cells. Mm -hmm. And yeah. 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 Think, uh, yes, I have a question from Alvaro. He asked if, if you check how is the expression of the NRP1 in the memory subset and after other kind of primary, primary stimulate, and doesn't this affect the formation of the circulating of T2 resident, for instance? So it's very interesting. So neuropenal one is not really expressed in the mature memory T cells. So that's actually give us a very strong indication. Yung Pini one is really works on the early stage of memory differentiation, rather the maintenance of memory T cells. Okay, thank you. The Nandini uh, said, great talk. Uh, can you comment about the relationship between the NR NRP1 and TCF1? Doesn't NRP1 directly regulate the expression of TCF1? So, so yes, uh, so what we found actually we did the, some analytic analysis that I mm -hmm. so is here. So we definitely see a very strong TCF1 signature correlating, correlated with non P1 deficiency the T cells. And, uh, and the supporting with that, we also see some signature like uh, ID3 mediated gene transcription or the signature corresponding to CXCL5 part of CD T cell, which is known to controlled by TCF1 and have this stem like phenotype. So this office that seems without non peeling TCF1 signature or TCF1 mediated gene transcription is definitely enhanced. But uh, uh, we so far are still working on what's the exact link between how neon peeling uh, signaling affect the TCL transcription. Or although we know it's actually, uh, it affects AP1 expression, then how the AP1 expression may cross talk with TCL transcription is still some ongoing work. Okay, thank you. The Eugenio asks, what will you see the, in the E81 CRE? NRP1 yeah. in the listeria or in the LCMB in the first secondary infection? The same phenotype in the tumor response? Uh, that's a great question. So we did some of the virus work that we didn't include in the paper. So the I think the key major finding is that we didn't really see too much of a phenotype in the acute LC which the Armstrong infection. But we see some similar phenotype of reduced T cell exhaustion in the chronic LCMV infection, the mm -hmm. clone 13 infection. Yeah. Okay. So Sorry, I have, yes, I had another question. What happened, you know, what happened the, the, with the spread in the NRP1 in the, for example, in the glioblastoma and the neuro, uh, the neuro system? The tumor in the neuro system, because maybe maybe the neuropilin is at high expression. I don't know, induce more. Um, I don't know the inhibition of the T cell, or I don't know. So I guess your question is: Is there any effect on the neuronal system, right? Because yeah, neuropilin yeah. might be expressed on neuron cells. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So neuropilin is traditional known to be a new, neuron, uh, neuronal uh, expressed molecule. And other than that, the other cell type expressed high level of neuropilin is the endothelial cells that uh, form the blood vessel. Mm -hmm. So neuropilin is known to promote the angiogenesis also. So but regarding the effect of uh, central nervous system so far, we don't really know uh, by if we use this uh, neuropilin one blockade to the patients. So we have to be patient, to be careful. However, what I can tell is that neon pinion one blockade actually already been done clinic, as a clinical trial very early on. That's to use the, as the to incinerize with the YGF inhibitor. 
So people initially thought to blockade neon pinion to blockade the new uh, neo angiogenesis, but um, that trial didn't really show too much neuronal adverse effects. So I would guess may not be so so severe, uh, but still need to 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 know more details. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. We don't have more questions. I don't know if uh, really nice talk, Gracie. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I don't know if Eugenio can set some final word. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Gracie, Nadini, and Alvaro Enrique for uh, helping me to uh, with this symposium. I think it's a great opportunity to discuss great science uh, with people from all over the world. And, and as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we invite you, anyone interested in uh, organizing or hosting a symposium to uh, feel free to contact us and we will help you through that. So remember that uh, November 11, we have anti helminthic immunity and we hopefully uh, do uh, organize another tumor immunology symposium, which I really find fascinating this topic. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, and see you then. And remember that these talks are all are, are oblated on YouTube, so you will you can uh, see this talk at any point. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.